Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lupus LA Your Story, Our Fight podcast. We are kicking off season two. That's right. I can't believe it. It is uh, it is our second season of podcasts, and we're kicking it off on Lupus Awareness Month. So welcome back. Um, we're refreshing a bit. We have a brand new sponsor I'm super excited to tell you about. Uh, it is Gemini Beauty, and we have an actual physical product here they sent me. This is fantastic. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even show you the inside here. Uh, some really cool beauty products, and we're going to talk to the founder, Joanne Zahini. Uh, in a couple weeks, we're going to be having her and her sister, who is a lupus patient, and one of the inspirations um, for Gemini Beauty. I'm personally excited because I'm a Gemini, so it this really fits right in uh, with the podcast. So I want to thank them for their sponsorship, and uh, we have some amazing guests in store this season coming up, and uh, I can't wait to share their stories with you. And to kick it off, we have a mother-daughter story today, and this is... Um, I think you're all going to find this story really special and inspirational, and uh, I want to welcome Liz and Mia Santa Cruz to the show. They are, um, Mia is a lupus patient diagnosed um, at age eight, and um, Mia, so tell me a little bit about, uh, first of all, welcome to you both, and tell me a little bit about how you were diagnosed and, and, and what you remember, because I know you, you started having symptoms when you were just six years old. So when I was six years old, I had um, my nails. They didn't look normal. They looked like they were a bit wavy and they had like holes on them, in them. And then that happened to my toenails. And my mom and my dad, they knew that something was up. <laughs> And so we began going to a lot of doctors, and they said she'll go out of it, it's normal, it's nothing. And then I began, um, I had a rash on my face. And then we finally found a doctor that gave us um, a plan. She said, first, we're going to try a medicine. Then if that doesn't work, we're going to try... Um, a cream for the rash. If that didn't work, we were gonna have to do a biopsy. Sadly, the cream and the medicine didn't work, so we ended up doing a biopsy. And and that was when you got the official lupus diagnosis after the biopsy? Got it. And then have your symptoms then also progressed beyond the rash and the nails and things like that? What are your other symptoms now? Um, before, I used to experience joint pain. Um, like a few weeks after her diagnosis, she started with joint pain. Um, Mm -hmm. Mia is the first person in our family diagnosed with lupus, so we didn't know anything about lupus until Mia diagnosis. I remember, well, during those two years, we used to Google rash on the face, redness on the (laughs) face, you know, trying to figure out what was wrong with her because we knew something was off. We just couldn't figure out what was it. And something that we learned with lupus is that basically you don't know what symptoms you're going to have until you've been affected by it. Uh, when we went to the rheumatologist, Mia had a rash on the face, had protein in the urine, had painless ulcers in the mouth. And a few weeks after that, Mia started with a joint pain. Um, back then, Mia was taking karate classes and she noticed that her knee were getting locked and they were hurting a lot. That's when we went to the rheumatologist and our third rheumatologist did an x-ray to make sure it was an arthritis. Mm-hmm. And after that, she sent Mia for physical therapy. And she used to have, she used to go to physical therapy before school, like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, <sighs> there was a point that Mia couldn't walk more than 40 minutes. And that, that was, a, that was a, a very um, hard moment because we didn't know what was going to happen with her. We were scared. We were concerned. Um, we never saw anything like that. And after physical therapy, um, I remember that we were at the mall with my husband. And Mia said, Mom, I want to walk more because it was already 40 minutes. We, you know, we were supposed to start heading home. And, you know, we were concerned. Like, I look at my husband thinking, like, should I, you know, should we do this? 
you know, should we just go home? And that day, Mia woke for two hours. <laughs> so that's like that's, <laughs> that special moment. It's like the same moment, like when your baby has like the first steps. <laughs> it's something that you're never gonna forget because it was a moment that we're like, okay, you know, things are changing. Like now she now she's able to walk. You know, this is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's uh, <clears throat> what you're all about to learn on this show is that Liz is one of the fiercest advocates for a patient, her daughter, that I've ever seen. And uh, we're going to get into some more of that about what you've done in terms of raising awareness for lupus. But but tell me, I, you know, I think when did that mama bear instinct kick in for you? I mean, I, I guess I, I want you to sort of take me through the stages of, you know, you said a little bit, of, you started with sort of fear. And then when did it turn for you that you said, okay, now we know what we're dealing with you know, my mission, you know, you, you got your marching orders in terms of, of, of keeping her healthy or making her, making her better. Something that I wasn't happy with is that I didn't know anything about lupus. Um, we were lucky that Mia's, um, internal organs were not affected by lupus, but that's not the case with all the kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these children can no wait like two, three, four years to get a correct diagnosis. And I always say, I went to high school and I didn't know anything about lupus. I went to college, I didn't know anything about lupus. I was a mom and I didn't know anything about lupus. So my goal was to create a better world for Mia and also for our community to learn about lupus and also about the symptoms and that it can also affect children. I want our little ones to learn the word lupus and what it is and also to become familiar with the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And how, so tell me, tell me what steps you took um, to sort well, first to get me on the right track. And then also beyond that, when did you decide, all right, I, I need to go beyond Mia and try to educate the rest of, of uh, whoever you could? Um, what I did is I, I went online and I was trying to see what other association organizations were doing for awareness for other illnesses. And I wanted to mimic that for lupus. And I noticed that in our town hall, they do a ribbon ceremony for cancer. I wrote a letter to our major and I explained why lupus was close to our hearts, why it will be important to the proclamation for Lupus Awareness Month, and also to do a ribbon ceremony to bring awareness. And it got approved by the mayor and the council member and that was the first step for our lupus awareness month. That's amazing. I, you know, we've over the years, Lupus LA has done a lot of uh, proclamations, and and we've gotten a lot of other people to do the same thing. And I think it's so important. And and the local governments are usually so excited to participate and to help. Um, and I think I, I really do think it makes an impact. And every time we, every time there's one of these ceremonies or one of these proclamations, you know, it's words on a page, but it's more than that. It's more. It's awareness. It's getting local um, government officials to focus on your story. Um, Mia, what's it like having a mom like Liz, who is just um, nothing gets in her way? She's amazing. <laughs> Tell me about how that helped you as a patient. It really helped me because um, my whole family supports me, my friends and my parents, they always help me and I really appreciate everything that they do. And give me an example. So when you were so when you were diagnosed, you were eight years old, so you were in second grade? Something somewhere in that range. So, do you remember what it was like in school for you when you were first diagnosed? I was a bit nervous because um, I had a rash on my face and I didn't know how to explain to my friends. Oh, it's lupus. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, it, at first, it was a bit hard for me, but then I began um, saying to my friends that it's lupus and. Um, I explained to them like what were the symptoms and like what um 
And I told them a bit about like what happened when I was little and my journey. Mm-hmm. And so what what are your friends like now about your lupus? Or, or do you have a real close group? They support me. <laughs> They're always there yeah. for me. They remind me to wear my hat, put on sunscreen, and what homeworks I need to take, what books I need to take. That's great. That's really nice. And so tell me, I know you guys have gotten... Uh, your school involved and your friends involved in raising lupus awareness. So tell me about a little bit about some of the programs you've done with your school. The nurse, she does a lupus mural and she puts um, like facts about lupus, uh, some of the different symptoms and a big penguin on the wall that says stop lupus. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I like that. The penguin, that's a new, uh, a new mascot for the lupus world. Um, and, and Liz, what have you done to encourage the school to, um, to bring lupus awareness to the forefront? Um, the first thing that I did is I set up a meeting with the principal and the nurses. I had a video. I asked if, well, first I asked Mia what the school does for awareness. And she told me that the school do a assembly for cancer. And again, trying to mimic and also create that in school that's when I set up the meeting with the principal and the nurses. And I had a presentation about what is lupus, the symptoms, graphics, everything. <laughs> and um, and I contacted actually a soccer team. If they will be mm-hmm. willing to go and, you know, have something fun, do something, you know, something fun for the kids. And, and they agreed to it. So our first lupus assembly was with the Red Bull Street teams and the first couple of minutes that I talk about lupus, you know, how it can also affect children, uh, when is lupus awareness month, you know, the butterfly, you know, the rash on the face, some of the symptoms, if they see a friend wearing a hat, what does it mean? Or maybe like using an umbrella when being outdoors. And then the little ones have like this fun assembly. And since then, every year, they always ask me, when is the next one? When is the next one? <laughs> That's good. So how many years in a row have you done it? Uh, I I did it about three years in a row. And and this year, uh, we're going to do it in elementary school and also middle school. Fantastic. I love it. Um, all right. We are going to take a quick break uh, and, and get a little message in from Lupus LA. And then we'll be right back. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, persistence because that's going to be our theme. And, and I think um, your story about rheumatologists is really going to be helpful to a lot of people. So we will be right back after this. Lupus LA's fellowship program is an essential part of ensuring the training of future rheumatologists. The nation is experiencing a serious shortage of pediatric rheumatologists. Today, there are approximately 300,000 children diagnosed with rheumatic conditions in the United States, but only about 250 practicing pediatric rheumatologists to meet this tremendous need. Lupus LA's Facebook Live Chat series connects leading lupus and health experts with our community to answer the most current and important questions. For more information, visit lupusla.org. Welcome back to the Lupus LA Your Story, Our Fight podcast. Uh, we are talking to Liz and me at Santa Cruz today. And <clears throat> when I before the break, we talked about persistence. So you are currently, Mia, on your third rheumatologist, right? <laughs> uh, so, Liz, tell me a little bit about um, the challenges you faced in the beginning. We won't name names, um, but everybody everybody has a different comfort level in terms of finding a doctor. And I think your story is really valuable to people who uh, may, or, may or may not have found a, a fit with their current or past or future rheumatologists and, and what you did I think was really important. So tell me, without naming names, tell me tell me what you experienced through the through the search for rheumatologists. Because we didn't know anything about lupus, I was doing a lot of research. I was listening to podcasts from other doctors. And one of the podcasts mentioned that lupus patients cannot have live vaccine such as a flu spray. A live vaccine. Okay, got it. And 
it was Mia was like nothing January and this rheumatologist didn't mention that like that spray flu vaccine and I got concerned because it's something as simple as that she didn't tell me what else you know I don't know like what, what like what else is missing and I got very concerned um changing rheumatologist was not an, an easy process I, I, I was scared because I didn't want to we screwed up anything you know it's my daughter mm -hmm. and i talked to other people and they told me you know you do what is best for your daughter and for yourself and i changed it to a second rheumatologist that's uh, when mia started with a joint pain and also with mia we learned that lupus patients that the weather plays an important factor with lupus patients you know some of them are more sensitive to the cold some of them are more sensitive uh, you know, to hot humidity, you know, weather. In Mia's case, um, the heat and the humidity dra drains the energy out of her body. And also back then she was going through joint pain when and her second rheumatologist was not acknowledging the symptoms. She was just telling me everything is fine, it's growing pains, she's okay. But my daughter, energy level will go from normal to zero. Like she wouldn't even have energy to eat, energy to change her clothes. So like I knew something was off. That's that wasn't normal. That's when I changed to a third rheumatology, and her third rheumatology did an X-ray to make sure it wasn't arthritis, which I, I was very happy about that. Because I didn't even know that that was a possibility, and her mm -hmm. third rheumatologist and her for physical therapy, which again I didn't know that that was a possibility, and 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 I was very happy how proactive she was. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, that's when my daughter wasn't able to walk more than 40 minutes. So we saw that change over the month, you know, and now, you know, thankfully after several months, she was able to walk normal again. So what do you say to other parents who, um, because I, I'm not sure a lot of patients or parents of patients would sort of have that conviction to to pick up and change rheumatologists when they felt a little uncomfortable and what would you say to other other patients or other parents that are going through that and may have some reservations about a particular doctor maybe it's not even a rheumatologist maybe it's their primary care doctor or or a specialist um, because i think that takes a lot of courage um, and so what, what would your advice be that i understand how you're feeling your symptoms and your feelings are real. The way you feel, the way your body feels is real. And this is something that your doctor needs to help you. If for some reason your doctor is not being proactive with your symptoms, try to see if there's a way that you can check with another doctor. Go for a second opinion. If it's possible, go for a second opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good advice. And, and Mia, do you feel like all of that really helped you manage your disease better in terms of finding the right fit for you? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I can imagine that. I think I think it's hard. I think when you're diagnosed, the idea of the the whole diagnosis can be super overwhelming. Um, and I think you get a lot of credit, Liz, for for being calm under pressure and, uh, you know, delivering, you know, I, I, I wrote down what you said when we spoke earlier and you said a mom's job is to build a better world for her daughter. And I think that's, um, I think that's clearly the case here in what you're doing. And so tell me, um, Mia, what do you think uh, as you look forward and you, you look towards your next steps and, and what are your interests? What do you, what do you want to do? Um, I'm really interested in technology. So in like maybe the tech field. Mm -hmm. And do you think you'll have, do you think lupus will play an important part on, on sort of all your, your journey? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's great. I think that's, I think that's really, um, really impressive. And I, and I, I want to sort of, I, Tell me about the relationship that you guys have in terms of 
having gone through this together as mother daughter, you know, I see my daughter with my wife and, you know, that bond is, is pretty intense to begin with, but what has it done to your relationship? I want you both to answer this, um, in terms of going through this lupus diagnosis and treatment together. I mean, when we go out and like, I know her facial expression <laughs> when something is so, so before even she says something, like I only look at her and I say like, you're not feeling well. And she's like, well, and I was like, you're not okay. And she's like, well, and I was like, okay, let's go home and, and you know, take a break, let's go rest. So I, <laughs> like I can tell her, so her facial expressions now <laughs> when something is, 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 is not okay. Um, I talk to her about everything. <laughs> we, has, we have a really good communication. Um, you know, we always there for each other. I always, I always tell her, tell me everything. You know, um, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And Mia, what, what do you think it's done? What, how would you describe the relationship? It's really good. Uh, we always communicate to each other. We always... Um, she knows my facial expressions very well. <laughs> and she knows when I'm feeling off. Yeah, I bet you know hers pretty well, too. <laughs> so... So tell me before we before we finish up, I, Liz, what are your hopes for lupus awareness in the future? And what do you think your next steps are towards continuing to expand your reach? I mean, as a parent, I would really love to see more communities, more towns embrace different type of um, like programs. For example, talk to your major talk to your council member, ask them if they can, if they can do a proclamation in your town. Ask them if they, you know, share your story with them. And a proclamation is a valuable item. Proclamation designating May as Lupus Awareness Month in your mind is valuable. It means something. Talk mm -hmm. to your, uh, your school, ask if they can do, if they can add a infographic about lupus. Go to your health department, ask them if they can add a flyer about what, what is lupus and the symptom or the May is Lupus Awareness Month. There's simple things that we can do as your family members, as your politicians to acknowledge May as Lupus Awareness Month on their social media. As mm -hmm. you know, there are different things that you can do. You can uh, wear a night on, you can do a butterfly. They have even the Elhan sign for lupus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Let's participate on these different campaigns, you know, like it's not only May about Lupus Awareness Month, but at least we have a whole month, you know, that is Lupus Awareness Month. So let's, you know, let's do something about it. And you can be a guest on the Your Story, Our Fight podcast from Lupus LA, right? Um, exactly. So uh, that, you know, we hope that's exactly what this show is about. It's about reaching people. It's about spreading awareness, telling stories that are inspiring, which I think you guys, uh, you, you win hands down. You are super inspiring. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. And uh, Mia, feel great. Um, enjoy your summer. And, and, uh, and Liz, thank you for all the work you're doing and, um, and for, for everything you've brought to the table. Uh, people like you are going to make a huge difference in the fight against lupus. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. On behalf of the entire team at Lupus LA, we thank you for joining the Your Story, Our Fight podcast. Please tune in, spread the word, and come back for more inspiring lupus stories. I'm your host, Adam Selkowitz, wishing you good health, and to always remember, your story is our fight.